What is up everyone, today we're showcasing a super strong team for the Great League. This is a squad I first saw my friend Skeffo run, he's always high up on the leaderboard with this squad, even making it as far as rank number one a couple of times. My friend Francisco also made it to rank number one with his team, and when I ran it earlier this week, I went 22 in 3 with the squad, so it is busted. Honestly, kind of feels like cheating when you use it. Just like the sponsor of today's video, Prime Gaming. Prime Gaming comes for free with your Amazon Prime account and offers many free games as well as free in-game items for some of your favorite games every single month. Like Pokemon Go. That has a new drop today, so let's go check it out. Finding the drop is easy. Just go to the Prime Gaming homepage, which I'll put a link to that down in the description below. Make sure you're logged into your Amazon Prime account and then it's already there on the front page. Just click on that. Go to the newest bundle and here you can claim your code. Looks like today we're getting 30 Pokeballs, 5 Max Revives and a Super Incubator which comes in super handy because I got some X2 Hatchers. Press claim and then you can take the code you get, copy and paste it into the app if you're on Android, it's on the bottom of shop or if you're on iOS, go to the website, log in, use your Pokemon Go credentials and then enter the code there. There'll be more drops coming over the next couple months, as well as free in-game content for a lot of other games. Personally, I like Fall Guys, Splitgate, and I've heard a lot of good stuff about StarCraft, so I might give that a try for free. You also get a free Twitch sub, which you can use on your favorite streamer every month. So what are you waiting for? Sign up using my link below. Anyway, let's get into the team. It's a fairly simple squad built around three extremely solid cores of Metacham Lickitung, Metacham Alola Ninetales and Lickitung Alola Ninetales. These three duos are incredibly strong on their own, but put together as a team of three, they form an even more balanced squad. In general, you're gonna want to run this team as an ABB line, since even though Lickitung and Alola Ninetales have extremely good coverage together, they still can be broken by something like a Paschidon or Registeel. So if you don't face that in the lead, you wanna Find a way to switch your Lickitung in, hopefully lure the Steel type, farm that down with Mana Champ, and then a Lola Ninetales can sweep in the back. However, there will be situations where you cannot do that, where you have to keep Mana Champ in the lead, and that is fine as well, since as long as there is no Basidon or Registeel in the back, Lickitung A9 form an extremely core for the back line as well. One thing I really like about this lineup is that a lot of people don't really expect the Alola Ninetales in the back. A very common team comp with Metacham in the lead, Lickitung safe switch, is another fighting weak Pokemon in the back, like Basidon, like Stunfisk, like Registeel or Warrein. So what I've noticed has happened a couple times is that people save their fighting type for whatever I have in the back and then the Alola Ninetales comes out. And it charms him down. Anyway, enough talking. Let's get into this battle. Starting with the most horrible lead possible in Alola Marowak. One of the few things that can break uh, the Metacham Alola Ninetales core. Luckily, though, I've noticed most Alola Marowak lead teams are quite weak to Licky Tongue. So as long as you can rely on that, uh, you should be able to manage them. And even Metacham can do a lot of damage to Alola Marowak and Psychic too. I actually know my opponent's team as well. I'm facing Inadequance and he really loves the Alola Marowak Tapofini Azumarill line. Uh, so that is what I'm assuming he's running, and in that case, my uh, Lickitung is just gonna do a lot of work here. Let's go with the Power Whip here, which is really nice. Now probably gonna bring in the Azumarill, which he does. I kind of wanna, I kind of have to save my Lickitung for the Alola Marowak, so I catch the player off here onto my Meta Cham, which is quite nice. You only need five more bubbles for another player off after this. I need eight counters, which is well, 16 turns versus 15 turns for the player off. Uh, so. I won't reach a psychic before that move, but I actually don't decide to throw, which puts me in a pretty good spot. It's going pretty low. Like, even if they threw, though, that would have been fine with me. Uh, because then I just let my meta champ go down. Uh, and I can probably... Uh, then, then they have no energy, so I can probably sweep with, uh, with the Licky Tongue at that point. So, this is fine. Now that they've built up some energy, it's actually maybe a bit worse for me. Since I'm going to have to use a shield somewhere. Or maybe just take the moves on a low line. Those would be fine as well. But, like, Licky Tongue is already very low. The Marowak might actually fire spin me down, so it's definitely not over. Bring the Alola Ninetales here. It's definitely gonna be a play rough, but that's fine with me. Oh, it's actually Ice Beam. I think he might have been expecting me to bring in the, the Licky Tongue there, but I brought in Alola Ninetales. Because he's gonna Bone Club. I let it go. I go for the Power Whip. I really should have baited here since the shield is quite obvious at this point. 
and I, I thought I was gonna reach another power up, but I don't. Oh, I, actually, I do. I do. Oh, I do reach a power up. All right, that's huge. Never mind. A bait there would have been stupid since I reached two power ups anyway. Bait is a necessary risk. Unfortunately, though, doesn't knock him out. I have to go for the charm down here. I think this charm afterwards will knock it out. And if not, the, the one after that will. Yeah, it does, does knock him out right there. And now I can just go for the weather ball, knock out the Azure Morel, and that is a G. All Tari I lead is not uh, the best, but I do outpace to an ice punch here. So my play usually here is throw seven counters, throw right before the sky attack, and then dip into Licky Tongue. Sometimes they'll even throw their sky attack immediately, and then you catch it on Licky Tongue. Uh, like this, like this. Usually, honestly, most wait a little more patient, but uh, this has happened a couple times, and it's quite nice. Puts you in a good spot. Usually, Altaria is paired with something like a Registeel, which, if that comes in, that's not great. But then you free up your Altaria for later, or your uh, Alola Ninetales for later, so it's not too bad. But this Altaria seems to be staying in, so they might not be too strong versus Licky Tongue. One other, like, very common Altaria team I've seen is with Walrein and Trevenant, in which case your Alola Ninetales is just gonna pop off. Recently, I feel like... People just really haven't been respecting Alola Ninetales. Uh, and this team really, uh, really makes use of that. They actually bring in the Reggie Steel now, which is kind of wild. I don't know why they didn't do that earlier. Yeah, that is interesting. But honestly, they were probably expecting the Alola Ninetales in the back. And in that case, they just, they really need, they really need a uh, Reggie Steel on that. Since it's usually like Medicham or croak in the back which of course also don't do well with other nine tails never mind it's a zoom roll which does deal okay with other nine tails but just not the best this should be fine now i let the first move go i just want to get a side shock off here to either knock out the zoom roll with my other nine tails or uh, take a shield so i can psychic it with metacham but on a cmp tie this won't knock out the zoom roll will, but we'll put it in a range where i can uh, counter down actually so they shoot it up I'm just gonna let my Alola Nightles go down now. This is easy psychic range. So I have no use for my Alola Nightles anymore. So I'm gonna save the shield for Medi so I can counter down the Reggie Seal freely. Gonna go for the psychic care. Threw a couple extra counters, even going above 100 energy. But I just wanted to get as much counter damage in to make sure the psychic knockout. And I didn't really care about my health anyway, since Zap Cannon was already gonna knock me out anyway. I go for the psychic here. Doesn't knock out, of course, but now should put him in counter range and they know it's how to concede the match. All right, our Rock when it lead is extremely awkward. Our Rock when it does beat Mana Cham, has a very good shot against Licky Tongue, and even can beat Alola Ninetales if they go straight Bubble Beam. So this is not great, but Mana Cham definitely isn't the worst here because you do only take res uh, neutral from these bug bites, and you also do neutral with your uh, your psychic. So it's not too bad. Or brought him quite low. I shoot up the correct move. It is the bug bust, but I do get the defense roll, which is very annoying. But I'll just throw the psychic here, probably switch to Licky Tongue after. Actually, let it go. I still switch to Licky Tongue since I wanted that lick. And I'm gonna have to switch out my Meta Champ anyway, since I uh, I was defense dropped. So, and usually it's this in the back. So I kind of want to save my uh, my Meta Champ for that. Was my was my plan? Uh, just in case there was a steel type, and well, it is. So I'm happy with this. Luckily, uh, Licky Tongue is not too bad there either. It's a power up. There's a lot of damage. You'll be able to. Uh, survive two earthquakes and get to two of these and then that they'll put the stun fisk in basically the red so it's pretty good i should get to two of them uh, i should survive this this is only possible with like very good iv licky tongue this is why you really want a high step product licky tongue for glaring stun fist, basically just so you can survive two earthquakes and get two power whips i'm actually gonna switch out there hoping to get some counter damage in before they switch but man they were right on the button there they, they, they switch it in instantly versus my incoming mana champ. And this actually puts me in not that easy of a spot. Since the Stunfish might reach a move versus my Alola Ninetales. So, honestly, I think I made a mistake there. Switching in my mana champ. Uh, if I would have just not done that, this would have been an easier game. Even get to the foul play here. So I have to use a shield. And now I just hope I can charm down plus lick down. The stun fist. They're gonna get there in three merch shots, so I actually throw my move on two charms to CMP tie. This will do one extra HP of damage, which might be huge, or even shield kill, but didn't shield kill. Uh, but I did get one HP more damage because I did that. And now hopefully Lickiton can farm down, and it does take it out in one lick, and we take the win. GG's. Ooh, Sableye lead is not good, so I bring in my Lickiton here. Most Sableye stay. Do come with like a steel type. Um, 
or not it doesn't seem like this one is because they're not switching but if they do come with a steel type this is so fun usually they only come with one steel type uh, and if it brings if they come into licky tongue then a9 can sweep but in this case they are super weak to uh alola nine tails with an altaria on the back as well this is what i'm saying people don't respect charm all right some of these teams just don't make any sense it's it's wild and just one charmer just runs through them uh we're gonna double body slam here because this will do a good chunk of damage to the altaria and we're gonna get another one off here this knocks out that's huge if it doesn't that's fine this is a pretty common team i've been seeing it's sableye altaria azumarill it doesn't make any sense to me but it's been common and this team just kind of claps it even though even though you are weak to their lead. You just charm everything down. You just charm everything down now. Even go for my move here. Because I want to get a shield. Uh, they shouldn't have. Actually, uh, I think this is good. I think I'm going to get the two weather balls later anyway. You know, we're just going to speed up here. It's just charm, 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 charm. So, yeah, they throw another move. They get, they get to a third ice beam here. They're not going to get to a play rough. So, you throw one move. And then they can't get to the player off. And now we just double weather ball uh, the Sableye. And we can charm down. Maybe even counter down afterwards. Yeah, I'm just going to go for the counter down. And that is a good game. Another Sableye lead. Bring in the Licky Tongue. What do they have? No counter? No steel type? Wow. Another team that disrespects the Charmer. It seems. In comes War right now. I'm actually going to go for the bait. Right? I usually uh, depends. Sometimes I go for body slam. Sometimes I go for power up. I don't know what the best play is. I think usually they shield. So I go for body slam. And I don't think they respect it. I don't think they respect it. We fill the bait. But they allow me to get to the power up here. I think this was actually right before the next icicle spear. So that's huge. I don't think they're expecting the slam. Or I mean the whip. And they let it go. And it puts them in one lick range. So they don't even get off their move. And I win switch against this war. And this is huge. Since now I'll be able to bring my Alola Ninetales into the Sableye. Really. My Lickiton go down. No use in shooting that. Bringing the Alola Ninetales here. And I think it's all over. Because they concede the match. The Ox is kind of a interesting lead. Since technically it has play versus all three of my mons. And technically it beats Metacham. Can beat a lot of nine to certain scenarios, and Liquid Tank takes super effective from counter. So, uh, what I usually do though is do a bunch of damage with uh, or just farm up a bunch with Metacham and then try to catch a move with Liquid Tank because most of the times these Deoxys lines are very weak to Metacham in the back. So, I kind of want to save it. And well, here is already one Metacham weak Pokemon in the Digger Speed, which comes into my Licky Tongue. Even though I have super effective power whips here, Digger Speed does win it because it's so tanky. It can survive two power whips and knock me out with two earthquakes uh, because they are resisting the licks, of course. Yeah, next earthquake will knock me out. Bring in my Medi. Gonna throw the Ice Punch uh, on the CMP tie with Fire Punch here, but they actually decide not to throw. That's which is fine with me. Knock out the Diggers at this point. Probably do a bunch of damage with my uh, Meta Cham against this Deoxys at this point. It is kind of energy dry. And uh, I just wanted to throw a move, honestly. At this point, I want them to throw a move into my Metacham because Metacham can take it easier than a lot of Ninetales. One very common back Pokemon I'm seeing with the Oxus is Volrein. So that is what I'm expecting it to be in the back. And there, my Alola of Ninetales are super, super fine. So I don't shield this. Afterwards, I'm going to switch into a lot of Ninetales and just hope I can charm through whatever is in the back. Actually, I don't even switch. I just throw another Ice Punch, probably hoping for another shield. They don't, but now I can charm down, but unfortunately they throw right before I can. I think I'm going to shield this up. Psycho Boost would hurt, and I want to save the health, and it is. It does end up being the Warrine. I have a very high ranked Alola Ninetales, uh, which makes this matchup much safer. I can actually uh, like take an Earthquake, so I don't even have to shield this, but I do, because I thought we were going to throw Earthquake. But even now, I think this Earthquake doesn't knock me out. And if, even if it does, I can just counter throw, right? Yeah, look, I survived the Earthquake because I have a very high rank, a lot of Ninetales, and we just charm down, GG's. Ooh, another uh, Sableye, and he comes with Toxicroak. Uh, Licky Tongue versus Toxicroak is actually favorable for Tox for Licky Tongue in the one shield. Uh, especially with this energy lead. Well, even without energy lead, you just beat Toxicroak in the ones, since all the licks plus, plus a body slam knock out, 
and a mud bomb wouldn't knock out from his range yet they have to throw sludge bomb and they can't get to a mud bomb plus sludge before two body slams so this is a favorable matchup for lady tongue in the ones but if they shoot up this next body slam they can actually beat me in the twos because they're barely able to counter me down here just barely i was two licks away it's unfortunate but now i can farm down this toxie with my meta gem at this point i'm not gonna let me go down i am expecting well honestly i'm expecting something strong and charm in the back but i mean what do you know it is not it is war rain it is war rain and, and we might actually be good here it's uh definitely not great they try to catch a side shock on sableye but it's not happening uh i think that didn't really matter though it might seem like a bit of a weird play for my opponent but it might have been their only play since even if they hadn't done that i would just side shock the wall rain shoot it at once farm it down and a weather ball for the sableye as well so it's just fine um yeah at this point uh, we just sweep with the alola nine tails once again it's kind of stupid how strong this thing is actually i'm gonna let this go and then meta cham can finish the job here pretty easily go for the sidekick we knock out the warine g g okay talon flame lead is another problem pokemon just like alola marowak one of the ones that can beat both meta cham and uh, alola nine tails but meta cham is still kind of fine here actually and i'm shooting the first flame charge which is so bad but look at the ice punch here uh hopefully getting a shield I uh, mean, I, I could try to call that, but I felt like they were gonna go for Braveheart, so I shielded it. I get to a Psychic here before their uh, next Flame Charge. Actually, they over-farmed there. They were farming up to Bravebird. Uh, so, you get there before. If they had thrown before my Psychic, I would have just no shielded it, because it was just gonna be a brave, uh, Flame Charge. Now, since they over-farmed, I'm expecting Braveheart, so I shielded up. In comes a Trevenant now, which is not too good, but luckily I do have a Nikki Tongue for this. Maybe I should have stayed in with my... <sighs> meta champ because then i guarantee that i get my uh alola or my licky tongue on the trevenant but i was ex i was maybe expecting something like a stun fisk in the back and in that case i kind of want to save my medi and i still have a lower line just for a trevenant as well so i'm not feeling too bad but the trevenant does have a good amount of energy to throw my alone line tail, so it is not good either if i can save my licky that would be ideal since i'm close to a move as well on medi so i would switch but and they also barely get to the to the earthquake here before my body slam, like literally one turn. Well, at the same time, but if I would have had one more lick, I would have gotten there. So it's kind of sucks. I go for the ice punch here, hoping they no shield. The no shield, this puts me in a very good spot. And again, just charm down. They shield it up, unfortunately. Now I want to I want them to use their energy on my meta jam. And then hopefully charm down with the Alola Nine Tails. That move didn't knock out. Go into my Alola Nine Tails. Can we get the charm down? They go for the Shadow Ball here. This doesn't knock me out, but they still have some more energy loaded and might be able to get to the Seed Bomb, which they do. Oh my god. If that one charm would have hit, I would have been able to counter down, but it doesn't. And now we're gonna get... Oh, I'm also like one counter away from the from Bio Sponge. That was a horrible lead, but we brought it very, very close there. GG's. Another Deoxys defense lead. Gonna play this similar as the last time where we're just gonna farm up a bunch of energy. Try to catch the Thunderbolt here. Usually I throw a double Psycho Boost, so at like 10. So that's when I switch. They didn't throw this time though, so it's definitely a Psycho Boost. But Licky Tongue is a tank. I can... Oh, wait, never mind. It's a Thunderbolt. Licky Tongue can still take that. Clearly, they're not that strong as Licky Tongue. So it's probably something like Warren in the back with maybe Sableye this time. Or uh i don't know i don't know what else is like super weak to licky tongue it could be in the back generally it, it, it's it's sableye uh if they're like super weak to licky tongue in the back so that's what i'm expecting in that case my alola nine tails is just gonna pop off once again go for the body slam which they uh they shield up uh since i'm expecting uh sableye i'm just gonna bring my meta champ here and just let everything go At this point i'm expecting alola nine tails to just be able to sweep what comes in now in comes the save i bring in my alola nine tails and it's not warren actually it's azumarill so it's also weak against licky tongue uh, not as weak versus alola nine tails so it's not great but i have two shields i should be finer i throw my weather ball since i'm expecting them to shield they do shield even if they no shield here like that's so fine I'm gonna shield up this move this point again we just charm 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 through this i know it's kind of boring it's kind of boring but it works and honestly if people dare to run lines this week to charm they kind of deserve it, right they kind of deserve it to just get fully charmed down we have moves for sableye now 
this is over again i'm gonna kind of just gonna speed this up a little bit one weather ball goes through another one goes through counter down bye bye sableye stun fisk lead is very good they're bringing a venusaur which is not ideal but i can get to through two ice punches now before they get to two frenzies but we lag and because of that they get to the frenzy before me which basically takes away any advantage i had from them switching in this means that we're now even on energy basically and they were able to get to the second frenzy before my second ice punch so that really sucks and i'm now forced to just switch into licky tongue uh, instead of taking another shield or health with that second ice punch since i didn't want to take a frenzy oh my mana champ of course we take this frenzy like a champ i'm gonna go for the body slam right here oh hey i think i kind of lost track as well definitely should have thrown that before the frenzy i think i just want to farm up though because i knew the body slam wasn't gonna knock out and God, they also switch into their stun fist this is just not looking good uh because now i got my best venusaur answer locked into a stun fist I got a meta champ in the back, who does have some energy, but is almost in frenzy plant range. Ember shields down, which means that if the Venus are able to farm up some energy later, they're gonna be able to knock out my meta champ before I'll be able to even fire move. I really want to get my Lickitung out of there, but the earthquake before I can do that. Now this puts the stun fisk into a nice farm down range for my meta champ though. Honestly, usually it is like Sableye with this line, so this is not looking too good, but it's actually not Sableye. And they're gonna bring in the Alola Ninetales, which is not good either. Uh, I'm gonna throw the Psychic here, and we get a Defense Drop, which is huge. We get a Charm in, whilst our Defense Drop. In comes the Venusaur now. They aren't that close to a move, but they do get their hair. This is Sludge, but it's just a regular Venusaur. So I survive. We charm down the Venusaur. We get to the Weather Ball versus the Alola Ninetales. Now they are like, I think, four away from a move. So if this Psychic knocks them out, we win. If it doesn't, we need to knock this uh, Alola Ninetales out in one counter. And we get the Defense Fall, which really helped me out because that counter knocked out. I think getting both those defense falls is what changed that game because I got one charm in which did more damage because of defense drop earlier and then the second defense fall allowed my counter to do slightly more damage. So I think if I would have like missed one of those drops, I would have lost. But because I got both, we got them. So you know what? I'll take that to compensate for the lag earlier. GG's. Swamper lead. This is honestly a lead I haven't really figured out that well yet. Uh, this can be paired with something like Regisio or Stunfisk. Honestly, I don't think it's a good pairing, but I have seen that often. Uh, so I kind of have to save my meta champ, but like switching in a Licky Tongue or an Itils versus this also not ideal. But that's what I do end up doing after throwing Psychic. I switch into Licky Tongue just to catch this move, hopefully lure out a potential Registeel, but it's a Nido Queen. And Needle Queen is not ideal for this team for sure. It's very manageable. This is actually why you're running Ice Punch on your Medi. Uh, but uh, it's definitely not ideal. I'm gonna go for uh, the Body Slam here. Hopefully they let it go. That will put me in a decent spot. And they do. But like it doesn't do that much. I should be able to reach another one though. If they try to farm me down. And they do. I get to another one. They're gonna shield this up most likely. Uh, we're not looking too bad here. Since my Manager is still reasonably healthy. Well, it's not that healthy. But... It's in a range where I can definitely survive this Poison Fang, uh, but I do opt to shield it up. I want to get more counter damage in and potentially get to the Poison Fang uh, or the Ice Sponge. I shield another one up, uh, and now maybe I just switch to A9. Yeah, three charms or two charms are going to knock out. So I save the Ice Sponge, charm down with A9. In comes the War and Unfortunately, though, those Poison Fangs have brought me into a range, or those Poison Jabs have brought me into a range where... Oh my god where the earth would knock out so i throw my side shock and they catch it that was honestly such a bad play by me since i could have i lose cmp you know i don't know i, I could have just waited a turn there right there was no reason for me to throw the side shock immediately there since they were still one away from the move i think so i should have just waited a turn to make sure they didn't catch him then i would have probably won the game so honestly very good play by my opponent there ggs Licky Tongue is an interesting lead. Uh, usually, you can just let your Meta Champ go down here, since uh, generally there is no, there is no like steel in the back with Licky Tongue. It would be kind of insane. Well, actually, I have seen Galarian Stunfisk or Regis in the back of Licky Tongue, since Licky Tongue really isn't the worst for something like Meta Champ, so it's not that bad. Uh, but uh, generally, it's not uh, the case. But I still like to switch in Licky Tongue here just in case. 
and generally it's like double fighting Lickitung double fighting is like very very common needle queen or, or yeah needle queen in the back of Lickitung is very common in that case i kind of want to lure that out with Lickitung. and this case is the sure fetch i end up over farming too much but Lickitung is an absolute monster i survive that leaf blade get to the body slam here at this point i'm also very sure it's double fighting since why would you bring sure fetch in the back of Lickitung if it's not meta champ as well um so i'm feel, feeling very confident here that a9 can sweep i'm still gonna shoot this up though since I, I'm so close to the move, I might as well. They can't really farm me down without having to use another shield. So I'm feeling very safe here. The Lickitung is also energy dry. Should be able to farm it down before they get to another move. In comes the Meta Champ indeed. Bring in the Alola Nine Dills and we charm, 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 charm until they concede the match. GG's. At Zoomeril. All right, so as Zoomeril lead, I actually stay in, uh, which seems a bit weird since I have two answers in the back. But generally, like 80% of the Zoomeril lead lines I've seen are all double ghost they're sableye a load of marowak um i don't know someone made that team and it's very annoying but in that case your best matchup for meta champ is azumarill so that's why i stay in expecting azumarill double ghost if it's not azumarill double ghost that sucks but still you have a lot of chance with licky tongue a load of nine tails in the back as well versus whatever it is since they shielded that, I didn't really want them to farm me down, so I actually switched Licky Tongue. Even if it's Azumarill Double Ghost now, I'm like in a fine spot. They stay in, so I actually end up shielding. It's a Hydro Pump, so that's a very good shield. Now I can farm up a bunch of energy with my Licky Tongue. They bring the Seolai, not ideal. Now I'm very sure it's Azumarill Double Ghost. In which case, I actually have to shield everything this Marowak throw or the Seolai throws at me. Since, uh, well, I kind of have to save the Licky Tongue for the Marowak. I do throw a shield this up. The foul play. Now they might be able to get the return still, which is definitely not ideal, but fine. I should still have enough health to put the Marowak in a uh, in a farm down range. At this point, I kind of want to uh, like catch a move, which I don't end up doing, but I do end up charming down the Sable with a single charm before they can even respond, which is quite nice. Now they're probably going to bring in the, a lot of Marowak, but it's actually not a lot of Marowak. It's a different ghost. It's Trevenant. They're able to get through the Shadow Ball here. But even if this knocks me out, that's fine. If it doesn't knock me out, I have the Weather Ball. Uh, I, I die there and I go on Shadow Claw, so I just throw the Weather Ball immediately. Even if the Azure comes in, which is what I was kind of expecting, this is fine. Because I get another charm. I can lick this down now or counter it down. Just gonna go for the counter down right here, I guess, or sacking my meta champ, which is also fine. Now we lick down, and now we should just be able to beat the trees, and they know it, so they concede. GG. Okay, Warring lead is very good, since I kind of triple counter this, but Nidoqueen comes in. And Nidoqueen is rough for this team. Nidoqueen is quite rough, but, you know, you have Ice Punch on Medi, you have Leaky Tongue, which is fine here, and you have Better Ball on a lot of Nine Tails, so it is very, very playable. I'm gonna let this move go, expecting the Fang, but the Earth Power, not ideal. I actually, I think this is a misplay. I, I saved the Meta Champ. I should have just thrown the Ice Punch, honestly. I really should have just thrown the Ice Punch. I think that would have been a much better play looking back. Uh, but I switched to the Lickitung, hoping that they just let this Boulder Slam go. But my opponent sees that I'm very weak against Needle Queen. So I shoot it up, actually switch out of the Needle Queen, bring out the Warren again here, since they know it's probably that weight against whatever I have in the back. Uh, which is smart. Uh, I take the Power Whip. Still two shields up, which is nice. I could shield this, but I think they're gonna get to another Icicle Spear before I get to the Body Slam, since I did get quite a bit of farm. Bring in the Alola Nitals here. They start farming this down. Do I shield the move? I might shield this potential Earthquake. I do shield the Earthquake. Very smart of me. Uh, farm down the Wall Rain. Now, what do they bring in? They bring in the New Queen again, I would guess. I wouldn't get to the move. Shield up. I could have. Here's the thing. Metacham is an ice punch. This is this is the trouble, all right? Metacham is an ice punch, but poison jab is a two-turn move. Switching takes one turn, throwing your move takes one turn. That's two turns. Poison jab, damage registers on the second turn. If I switch uh like on alignment, I'm gonna die to the poison jab before I can throw my ice punch. So what I have to do here is either wait one turn before switching or throw a charm before switching. So I think that's what I try, throw a charm and switch, but I actually end up switching in uh, the save lie. I guess they were expecting me to throw my ice punch there or switch to the manager and throw my ice punch and I try to catch it on save lie, but that didn't work. Threw my weather ball into the save lie. Now we're just going to take this foul play. 
farm this thing down with charm. Again, it's the same issue. I can't switch here. Or my Metachem is gonna die to uh, to a poison jab, so I just have to hope they're not gonna move here, and they weren't. So I get off the Ice Punch here, take out the Needle Queen, and that is a GG. That's also the final battle of the day. Hope you all enjoyed. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Good luck, your battle strangers.